Hello, in this video we'll talk about where to do a PhD from, from abroad or from India. We're going to analyze all the pros and cons. If you are applying for a PhD position, this video is for you. So stay tuned till the end and subscribe this channel. Now if you're wondering where to do a PhD from, whether you like to do it from India, USA or UK, you have to consider the following factors. These are duration of the PhD, the fellowship amount, the teaching assistant duty requirements, coursework during the PhD, how intense that is, funding options and publications. These are the all uh, points that we should remember before choosing to do a PhD. Make sure you have watched the video whether to do or not to do a PhD. This is really basic right now because before you decide whether to do or not to do a PhD, you have to account for many factors and this video summarizes for all. The link is in the description. Now before that, let me tell you if you are worried about examinations because you have to give examinations for PhD entrance, several entrance examinations or at MSc level or at undergrad level, Unacademy will get you covered. It has lectures, notes, doubt clearing sessions which are really great during your preparation journey. It helps you during your preparation sessions. So Unacademy has courses for different different uh, stages. For example, it has UG level, NEET UG or IIT JE entrance examination preparation. It has NEET PG, it has CSIR NET, IIT JAM BT, GATE. All of these examinations are covered by an academy. One stop solution for all of these things. Now, if you are wondering that what they offer in NEET UG, let me tell you for NEET UG 2022, they are offering a crash course. This is known as Vijeta crash course and this is dedicated for NEET UG 2022. And this starts from March 16th. You should enroll right now and this would be highly beneficial if you want to revise the entire syllabus in a rapid pace and this would be really beneficial for your uh, NEET UG examination in the long run. The prices will be hiked really soon. So if you want to take a plus subscription or let's say iconic subscription then take it before March 30. Beyond that there would be a hike in the plus subscription. And right now if you take a subscription within 16th March then you will get many offers. For example uh, I mean you can get many mock test series, access to question banks, in-depth analysis of video solutions, all of these things. Just remember my QR code my referral code which is ap10 and use that while subscription it will give you 10 percent discount okay back to our discussion about phd from abroad versus phd from india so let's try to understand what really happens during phd from india what are the pros and cons while doing phd from india you might have a overall dream of doing phd from a prestigious indian institute like these now the question is, what are the factors you should understand before that? And you should also ask, is it worth doing PhD from India? Let's analyze the pros and cons together. So the pros is, if let's say your institute is in the city that you are living in, that means you can really commute from your home to your institute. That means it's really easy for you to live in your home as well as do your PhD in a dream institute. So that is one big pro for doing PhD in India and many people have family level constraints so this is really good for them. Now while doing PhD and while you stay at your home you can stay connected with your friends and family that give you a good feeling overall. But what about the salary, stress and work hour? Let's analyze that part. Coming to the work hours. So the ideal PhD work hour should be 40 hours a week that means 80 hours sorry eight hours a day and five days a week so generally you should have a two days weekend and five working days but you end up having 60 to 80 plus work hour per week in india so this 60 to 80 hour does not account for productive work hour it has all non-productive time wastes included what do i mean by that if you are not understanding that listen to this so if you're wondering why does PhD take so much time in India? Why you have to spend so much time in the lab? Let me break it down for you. So in abroad, there would be a lab manager who will kind of manage the fundings. 
he he or she would apply for all the chemicals order all the chemicals take charge of repairing many lab equipments in short lab manager will make your life easy unfortunately indian labs don't have lab managers i mean it's it, it's really rare that a indian lab would have lab manager why because they have graduate students graduate students can do all of these things besides their working hours and that's why imagine a graduate student has to go to the class sometimes ta in the class sometimes they have to go to the lab they have to work and be and after all of these they have to do all these admin works so obviously it's difficult to manage the time now sometimes there is very good mentoring that you uh, get in the indian institutes and that is very lab centric it helps you to grow as an independent researcher and there are many labs across india where you would get very good mentorship where your pi would interact you in a regular basis guide you throughout the experiment but also give you enough freedom to be a independent researcher this is this this kind of example exist in all the indian institutes but there are also examples where there is too much of micromanaging it kind of makes life difficult for you it doesn't allow you to be a independent researcher and be the boss of your own time in short in the long run it will kind of make you more dependent on your pi moreover there could be unhealthy lab environment and there are many institutes where there are many labs where the environment is not really friendly or kind of like adequate for a mental growth so that's a big problem in india all these things would lead to depression and just to add with your depression fellowship not credited in time is another big trigger for depression why because many fellowship programs in india i'm not naming any one of that has very infrequent release of funds and that's why the fellowship gets credited in an infrequent manner as a result you end up getting the whole money but in a delayed fashion imagine you have to support your family or your old parents how do you do that without no money in your pocket isn't it a huge stress when you have this kind of financial crisis you would focus more on solving that financial crisis instead of solving a scientific question and that's why your focus gets shifted from science and the survey says there are many indian students who lost interest in science just because of this kind of financial crisis that they have to go through and that's a big problem in india okay enough of indian phd let's go to abroad so let's talk about the things to consider before phd from abroad obviously financial aspect would be sorted if you have a fellowship so financial things would be much better in abroad compared to india also the work life balance is way better in abroad compared to india because you don't have to waste so much non productive time in your lab they would have lab managers things would be more organized and structured now let's talk about the destinations where people generally like to do phd in abroad it includes europe usa majorly so if you are applying for any of these fellow any of these countries for a phd you should know what are the difference between phd programs in these two countries let me quickly give you a overview so phd from usa and phd from europe are different in terms of their duration generally a us phd stretches from 6 to 7 years on average whereas a euro phd is short it ranges from 3 to 4 years on average let's talk about the application process so when you apply for usa you apply for a phd program you apply for a department that means no lab is chosen at the time of application when you get selected you will be rotating in many lab and then you can choose a lab but when you apply for europe in general you have to target a lab so you get appointed to a lab at the first and there is no scope or very low scope of rotation there are a few exceptions although anyway let's talk about the ta duties so ta duty requirement is kind of mandatory in usa there are few exceptions but it is quite often that you have to be a teaching assistant while you are a phd student ta duty requirements are mostly waived in european countries 
so occasionally you might have to do some TA duties, but it's not really expected in many of the cases. That means it saves a lot of your time. Then coming to the coursework. European PhD program has very low coursework, whereas US PhD program has intense coursework and it is mandatory. That means overall, these two PhD programs in two different continents are quite different from each other. Coming to the salary part, which is the most important part. Salary is kind of similar and both these cases, these are satisfactory. Depending upon which institute you are applying from, uh, you are applying for, things would be a little bit different. A uh, average US PhD salary could range from $15,000, sorry, $1,500 to $2,500 per month. And uh, an average European salary could kind of uh, vary from 1300 euros to 2000 euros. And this is very subject to, to the part particular institute and the funding agency that is providing you fund. It could go up and down depending upon the cost of the location and all of these things. Now, in several European countries, PhD students are seen as employees. That means they would have their work contract and this work contract would include many things. And they have to pay health insurance, unemployment insurance, taxes, all of these things. But there are few countries such as UK and Italy where uh, PhD students are treated as students and not employees. And in, in that case, they have to apply for university scholarships, external fellowships or research grants for their funding. There are a few exceptions where the lab is so rich that they can provide fund to the PhD students. That's also there. Then tuition fees are drastically lower in European countries compared to the uni uh, United States. So overall, in terms of the tuition fee that, that is uh, deducted from your pocket is way lower in Europe. Now funding at American universities varies widely based on whether it's a private university or it's a public or state university. That means it's quite variable in USA and also it's variable in uh, Europe as well. Now the top schools offer uh, five years funding packages. This package includes tuition fees. It provides some monthly stipend. I give you a range already. They also include uh, health insurance or other kind of insurance, some kind of like conference in travel insurance or conference travel contingency grant in all of these packages. In small schools, that means which are not that popular, you might have to apply for fellowship uh, from the university. There are many options though. Now, partial tuition fee waiver or tuition credit can be obtained uh, if you do TA during your PhD. That means it can waive your tuition fee maybe or it can give you some extra money while you are doing a PhD. That means teaching assistant duty is really important uh, during PhD, uh, PhD course in USA, but it's not that important in Europe. Now you understand PhD from abroad looks very different what you think of. Though there is good amount of money, little bit better lifestyle, but yet I'll tell you things are really hectic in PhD, whether it's India, whether it's abroad. But you got the positive point, right? Be it India, be it abroad. In order to earn the PhD, you have to show hard work, patience and resilience. I hope you found this video useful. I have plethora of notes and flashcards in my Facebook page. Link is provided in the description. And there are many flashcards which are actually dynamic flashcards. It would help you to revise very quickly. You can get them in Facebook or my YouTube community post. As usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Please put your comment and let me know whether it was useful or not. If you need more videos and which videos I, I should make a, I mean, which topic I should make a video on. Anyway, you can support my channel on Patreon. I'm also present in Unacademy. I take multiple uh, courses there. My courses are accessible by using my code AP10. And if it's a plus subscription using the same code, you can get a 10% discount. All my social media links are provided in the description. Feel free to connect with me in social media. I would be happy to help. See you in next video.